Hi there, and thank you so much for either purchasing or considering purchasing a Phonics STS series sensor. My name is Rick, and today I'll be taking you through how to set up one of these once it gets delivered. Let's start by verifying that you got what you ordered. The packaging will vary depending on the sensor quantity and shipping method, but you'll generally start by opening a box. Once open, you should see two or more smaller boxes inside. Each sensor generally comes in two boxes, one for the cable, designated by the label containing CVS, and one for the body of the sensor, labeled STS. When opening these smaller boxes, avoid cutting deep with your scissors or knife to prevent damage to these components. Once you've opened the boxes and removed the contents, you should find a cable of the length you ordered with the connector covered in a protective boot. It's always a good idea to check along the length of the cable to verify there are no signs of damage. Number two is the sensor body with a protective boot on either end. And number three is a card with a QR code you can scan with your phone to take you to our resources page containing the manual along with other instructional videos and articles. The website address is on the card as well if you don't have a phone or app to scan the QR code. For conductivity and dissolve oxygen sensors, simply remove the tape, then remove the boot during use and replace when storing the sensor. The next part of the video is specifically for pH and ORP sensors, so if you ordered a different type, then please skip to the section titled Connecting the Cable using the play bar below. pH and ORP sensors require stored solution, in this case saturated potassium chloride, inside this protective boot. Some of it may spill out during this process, and if it gets into your eyes or an open wound, then it could cause mild irritation, so please handle accordingly. In addition, if you do not have potassium chloride on hand to replace what gets spilt, then I recommend waiting and not following along until you're actually ready to use the sensor. This is because storing the electrode dry or in tap water can result in reduced electrode life. For more information on this, please see our video titled Proper Storage of pH Electrodes in the upper right. Before taking off the boot, make sure you have a container to catch the potassium chloride along with a towel to clean up any spills. After removing the tape, keep the sensor upright while squeezing the bottom of the boot and sliding it off the sensor. This exposes the electrode and a piece of soaked cotton ball kept in place by the guard. Grip the guard and the sensor on either side of this separation seen here. Bring it close to you to maintain control, then slowly pull it apart, uh, being careful to avoid hitting the glass bulb at the end. Once off, remove the cotton ball and snap the guard back in place Again, being careful not to hit the bolt. We recommend saving the boot and using it whenever you wish to store the sensor. Next, we will install the cable. Remove the rubber guard on the connector, as well as the remaining guard on the top of the sensor. Insert the cable connector into the top of the sensor, pushing in lightly and twisting to screw it in. Do not continue to apply force once the connector is flush with the sensor body, as this may strip the thread and make it difficult to remove in the future. Your sensor is now ready to be connected for calibration. The red and black wires are for the primary parameter, either pH, ORP, dissolved oxygen, or conductivity, while the green and white wires are for connecting the optional temperature sensor. Each pair of wires has reversible input protection, meaning either can be used for power or the signal to make wiring extremely easy. Once the sensor is plugged in, then simply calibrate by following along with the instructions in our manual, and then you're ready to start measuring. The manual is linked in the video description below. That's all there is to it. For any questions or concerns, please reach out in the comment section below or via email at contact at Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.